This video looks at sketching frequency response. So up till now we've looked at things like what is frequency response and how do I compute this efficiently? And now we want to focus on the next question which is how do I represent frequency response information in a helpful fashion? So the previous video showed how we could determine expressions for the frequency response gain and phase based on a transfer function. But these formula were not particularly insightful on their own. Now what you'll find is that humans often relate much better to pictures and graphs. And so what we want to do next is to sketch the gain and phase in a graphical form because we're hoping that this sketch will be more insightful and therefore more helpful. First question then is how do I produce sketches and we're going to suggest to start with that we use MATLAB and we'll move to doing it by hand shortly. Now the easiest tool to use in MATLAB is bode.m. Uh, what have you got to do? Define a transfer function object g or you can use whatever name you like obviously. Define a frequency list omega of your choice the frequencies you're most interested in and then the command you use is this one. Gain comma phase, those are the output arguments, equals bode g comma omega. So g is your transfer function object, omega your frequency list. Now the values for the gain and the phase corresponding to the frequency list omega will appear in the same positions. So for example gain of 3 will correspond to the third value of omega. So you can therefore easily do a plot once you've got all these values and we will illustrate that at the end of this video. Some examples then. We take a first order transfer function, here it is, g equals 3 over s plus 2. I can calculate the formula for the gain, there it is, and the formula for the phase. But rather than doing that explicitly, I'm just going to use MATLAB and get the sketches. So here you can see the sketch of gain against frequency omega, where that frequency is in radians per second. And here you can see the plot for the phase. Now, we want to ask ourselves, what do these plots tell us? Well, looking at the gain plot first, we can see that for low frequencies, the gain is one and a half. I'm not sure what went wrong there. So for low frequencies, the gain is one and a half. There it is. Oops, that keeps disappearing. I better stop writing. As frequency increases, the gain drops to zero. For low frequencies, the phase, you can see here, I use the cursor, is zero. And as frequency increases, the phase tends to minus 90. But another thing you might notice is that it's quite difficult to see detailed information in the low frequency range. And we'll go on to that discussion later. Here's a second example. You can see we've chosen a second order example now. And again, we can write out the gain formula. We can write out the phase formula. But rather than doing this by hand, we'll use MATLAB and just generate the sketches. So there's the sketch of how gain changes with frequency between 0 and 100 radians per second. And there's the sketch of how phase changes with frequency. So what about the interpretation? So for low frequencies, we can see the gains at 0 0.67. You can see it here using the cursor. And as frequency increases, the gain goes to zero. You can see that over here. Similarly, looking at the phase plot, for low frequencies, the phase is around zero, and as the frequency increases, the phase goes to minus 180 degrees. But again, it's quite difficult to see any detailed information. We can see the trends, um, but not much else at the moment. Now we've got a slightly more complex example. Look at this one here. G of s equals s plus 4 over s squared plus 2s plus 20. And again, there's the gain formula and there's the phase formula. So I'll plug this straight into MATLAB and what do you see? These curves don't look quite the same as the earlier two. So in terms of discussion, you've got a pattern. You can see there's a pattern. The gain plot starts at 0 0.2, it goes up and then it comes down again and goes to zero. Okay, you can see the phase plot as well. It starts at zero, goes up slightly, drops down rapidly towards minus 90. So there is a pattern, but key things to notice, difficult to see the detail 
in this low frequency range, this peak is all very cramped together and I've got a lot of space on the graph showing me this trend, very little space on the graph showing me this peak and similarly for this peak over here. Now just out of interest you might want to notice that this peak in the game plot indicates a resonance and again that's a topic we'll return to later. So some interim conclusions. It's straightforward to sketch the frequency response parameters and hence get an overview of how gain and phase change over a range of frequencies. However, you'll tend to find that most of the space on the graph is given over to larger frequencies and therefore any notable changes in the low, low frequency range are cramped into a small part of the graph domain. Similarly, very large frequencies are not included. Finally, perhaps what's most critical, it's not obvious from the formula what causes the shapes and asymptotes that arise, and therefore how changes in poles and zeros will affect the overall shapes. So yes, we can sketch these plots, but what we really want is some insight into what the plots look like and why. Now just to finish, we've shown that it's easy to use MATLAB to generate the sketches, so that's what we'll do here very quickly before we finish. OK, so let me just clear this MATLAB window. So what I'm going to do is enter a transfer function. There it is, G. And now I'm going to enter frequency list, a very short frequency list here. You'll see I've chosen five frequencies. Then I use this bode command. So you'll see I'll, um, perhaps I should have put a semicolon on that one. So you can see I get the values of the gain and the values of the phase that correspond to that frequency. And reading up, you'll see the phase, it's got a fifth value, a fourth value, a third value, a second value, and a first value. And you remember that omega had five values. Now I can simply use the plot statement in order to plot these. I've used a cross here because there's so few points so the curve would look a bit funny. So each of these crosses, if we've got frequency on this axis down here, and gain on this axis up here. So hopefully you can see, very easy to use MATLAB to generate these plots should you need them.